Okay, so let us start today's tutorial. I hope I'm audible to you and my slides are visible. I welcome you all to the seventh tutorial of this course, Reagents in Organic Synthesis, which is conducted by NPTEL and whose course instructor is Professor Suvas Chandrapan from IIT Guwahati. I am Deepika, your PMRF teaching assistant and I'm doing my PhD in organic chemistry at IIT Bombay. So in this week's uh, video lectures, if, if you have gone through, you must have uh, come across the video lectures. Two of the video lectures were there for this week, which were basically based on silicon, lead, lead uh, tin and bismuth based organic reagents, which are used commonly in organic synthesis okay and sir has already covered most of the types of different reactions of these reagents okay so in today's tutorial we are going to solve questions on the same topics and also i have included a few examples of some reactions which were not covered in the lecture video lectures but those are equally important and those are also involving these uh, met metallic reagents okay so let us start from the first question yeah so this sulfonated uh, substrate is taken and it is treated first with 1.1 equivalent of butyl lithium okay then whatever product you will get in the first step after 30 minutes that product is going to react with aldehyde okay basically in the first step we are going to generate an anion and that anion is going to react with this aldehyde which we are uh, adding after 30 minutes of the generation of the anion okay so after the addition of the aldehyde you will get the product of step 2 and whatever product you are going to get in the step 2 that is going to be protected using acetic anhydride okay and here the product which you are going to get after three steps is mentioned okay but we are going to look at the reaction step by step okay and the question is saying that after getting this acetyl protected sulfonylated alcohol, we are again treating this product with six equivalents of DBU base. Okay, a huge amount of base we are taking to react with our sulfonylated acetyl protected alcohol. So, after treatment with base, you can see that. This acetoxy group has left and we are getting an olefin here. Then this olefin is reacting with samarium iodide and that reaction is resulting in this carbon sulfur bond breaking. Okay, so this reaction you can say that it is a modification of Julia olefination. Okay, and at the end you are getting a trans olefin okay let us see how step by step you can get this product starting from this saturated compound okay so first what happens like i said the butyl lithium is going to generate i i will just show you step by step by writing 
okay so at this position the butyl lithium is going to generate the carbon ion because this carbon ion will be stable since it is having a substituent which is electron withdrawing okay because of this so2 ph groups present this anion which is going to be generated by butyl lithium will be very very stable so this anion after generation in 30 minutes is going to be added to an aldehyde now which you can see as getting added like this and the arrow will be pushed towards oxygen and when you work up this reaction you are going to get an alcohol okay this r is coming from aldehyde and the other r dash will stay like this which will contain your so2 ph substituent so this is going to be your product in step 2 so2 ph and after step 2 you can see we are using acetic anhydride condition okay and under the presence of acetic anhydride this oh is going to be protected by acetyl group like this so this is matching with what is given as the product of step 3 now we are further going to add huge amount of base which is again going to generate a proton uh, carbon ion at this position by abstraction of proton and this can lead to the knocking out of OAC like this okay and you are going to get the first olefin of this type. Now this olefin is going to react with samarium iodide. Let us see how after the addition of samarium iodide we are going to get this E olefin okay see this is the product which you are going to get in the first reaction sequence okay the first product which is given is this one so in this research paper the authors have shown that how samarium iodide can lead to the cleavage of this carbon oxygen bond to knock out the OAC group okay so what happens the samarium metal which is being treated with the substrate donates one single electron to the sulfone in this manner to generate this sulfur radical okay and this sulfur radical subsequently undergoes homolytic cleavage to give you carbon sulfur bond cleavage and like this you get this carbon radical now another electron is going to be donated by the metal present in the reaction system and that will give you this kind of intermediate product okay this is the intermediate product by two electron donation by metal okay and subsequently the author showed that you can get the Z olefin by pushing the carbon electron pair from this carbon ion and you can knock out this OAC from the substrate okay. So this is how they showed how carbon oxygen bond of this acetyl protected alcohol is breaking okay. So the same thing is going to happen in this particular example as well okay first the samarium metal which is given will donate one single electron to the sulfone which will lead to the bond breakage of carbon sulfur okay and in this case since you are already having the olefin carbon carbon double bond the carbon ion which you will you are going to get generated by two electron donation from samarium will take a proton from methanol to give you 
this e olefin which is more stable okay so this is the reaction sequence that is going to be followed in your question number 1 so this is how from starting uh, by starting from this saturated sulfonylated compound we are going to get the e alkene i hope this is clear okay and this question is mentioned in the literature as modification of julia olefination okay you just have to notice the uh, reaction sequence in presence of samarium now okay let us go to the next question okay this is a very important concept but very easy as well so in this week sir has also covered oxygen protecting groups okay which are basically silicon based protecting groups okay and he has also clearly mentioned that these protecting groups are very very sensitive towards acids okay some of these silylated protecting groups fall off in weak acids and some other need strong acids for carbon oxygen uh, oxygen silicon bond breakage okay so here you can see that this cyclic ether or cyclohexane both okay both can undergo this reaction and usually dibolage we have studied as a reducing agent but in this particular case you can see that the net result you are getting in the reaction is deprotection okay deprotection of this ots group and whenever we are taking these kind of cyclic ethers or cyclohexanes containing silylated protecting groups as a substituent when they are treated with dibol h reagent we can expect the deprotection of silylated protecting group which is protecting a primary alcohol which is preferable more preferable than secondary alcohol protection okay so whenever you come across such re, uh, such substrates where we are taking dibol h um, both the protecting groups are same okay triethyl silyl uh, it, it is basically silicon which is attached to three ethyl substituents okay that is triethyl silyl protecting group but the only difference is this alcohol is secondary alcohol and this is primary alcohol so preferably dibol h is deprotecting your primary alcohol okay so you have to remember and if you look at the eel numbers the, those are also very good in in fact in case of the cyclic ether the yield is very very excellent okay so thus you can use whenever your substrate has suppose two such silyl protecting protected alcohols and you preferably want to deprotect your primary alcohol you can use dibol h okay so this is a this is an important reaction as you can use this reaction in your organic synthetic procedures again let us go to more some more questions from this silicon based reagents here i have included a table okay just to show you how different protecting groups react with the deprotecting reagents okay so tbaf is well known for deprotection of silylated protecting groups okay but if you look at this particular table where different silylated protecting groups are given tes and tbs you have already studied uh, if you want to know tips and tbdps structure suppose tbdms is basically tbs only okay but uh, if you want to know <coughs> the structures of tips and tbdps these are the structures of, of them and you can notice that as we go from top to bottom the 
bulkiness at the silicon center is increasing okay from tbs to tbdps the bulkiness around the silicon atom is increasing and with increasing the bulkiness the stability towards acids and base also is increasing from top to bottom hence if we talk about tms or tbs groups we can easily deprotect them in very small amount of time okay but when it comes to deprotection of tips and tbdps groups it requires a little more amount of time as compared to tms and tbs okay that is why i have included this table to show you let's see when we are uh, deprotecting tes uh, okay which is silyl and attached to 3 ethyl group okay this is tes that group is taking only 30 minutes to get deprotected after breaking the oxygen silicon bond okay then if we move to a more bulky group which is tbs or tbdms you can call is taking 42 hours okay mm, maybe there is a there could be a mistake it should be 42 minutes okay 42 minutes then if we move to tips and tbdps which which are even more bulkier are taking one day or even almost 75 hours okay they are taking huge amount of time for their deprotection okay so this is how the bulkiness of the silyl center of the silylated protecting groups can dictate how fast these groups are falling off okay in presence of tbf reagent so <clears throat> this is how you have to solve these questions suppose your question has two different protecting groups two or three different protecting groups and the question is on selectivity you have to note down these points okay the stability of these silylated centers in uh, towards acids or base you have to consider and accordingly you have to answer the questions okay so after that another example i have included now your substrate if you look at is containing three different protecting groups okay following the previous table you can now easily distinguish between the ease of deprotection of TMS, TBS, TIPS and TBDPS. So out of all these three, TBS is the least bulkiest uh, silicon center. So in presence of this trichloroacetic acid, which is uh, comparatively a weaker acid, you can expect the falling off of only the OTBS protected uh, alcohol okay and the yield also if you notice is a very very good yield then another similar question TES and TBS again in presence of this acetic acid you can see that when it comes to the selectivity between primary and secondary alcohols, the primary alcohols get deprotected more preferably. Okay, but you must know that suppose we are using this acid in excess amount, in that case, you can expe expect the deprotection of both these groups. Okay, but when excess amount is not mentioned in the question, you have to go for only the primary 
alcohol okay because they are more preferably uh, knocked out by the deprotecting group uh, deprotecting reagents <coughs> then let us come to the lead based organic reagents okay so lta is lead tetraacetate and in the first lecture of this week sir has covered the lead tetraacetate based reagents okay and their reactivity so here also i have included you can see this diol you have okay and both the diols are present in the quaternary centers so what will happen if you uh, revise the mechanism the diol will get bound to the lead tetraacetate to give you this kind of five membered ring intermediate okay which will immediately undergo ring opening four acetoxy groups are attached to your lead center and due to the attack of the diol two of the acetoxy groups are knocked out from the lead tetraacetate okay and it ultimately gives you the five membered ring intermediate and this five membered ring intermediate if you see this uh, undergoes ring opening to give you carbon carbon this carbon carbon bond cleavage if you see undergoes okay which is colored as green and it divides your substrate into two halves to give you two carbonyl compounds so similarly if you look at your substrate here also you have a diol so they will first attach to the lead center suppose i am just showing you the intermediate and two oac groups will be attached to the lead center so this kind of five membered intermediate compound you will get okay and these protons you can eliminate and then this can undergo ring opening in this way to break your carbon carbon bond between the diol okay this is how you can show the ring opening to get this carbonyl compound now in the mechanism that i have shown since the compound is acyclic you can get these two fragments from your substrate okay but in this particular substrate since the substrate if you see is cyclic okay it is a cyclic diol so you are going to get another cycle only but it will be now bigger because of the breakage of this carbon carbon bond okay at uh, in the beginning if you see you had three rings which are say 6 5 5 fused rings okay and at the end because of this carbon carbon bond breakage now this bond is broken and now you get six fused with 10 membered ring okay so you if you want to synthesize these kind of large ring diketones you can choose lead tetraacetate as your reagent to act upon these kind of diols okay <clears throat> and the yield if you see the research paper i have taken from they have shown that the yield is quantitative yield okay almost 100% yield you get from this carbon carbon bond cleavage reaction so then 
sim sim similar reaction i have shown here you have two fur uh, uh, tetrahydrofurans linked through this carbon carbon bond which are also containing various functionalities including this diol and this hydroxy ester okay but you only have to notice this diol functionality present in this substrate okay and you can see that both lead tetraacetate and sodium meta periodate on silica are giving you the same product which is basically this diol carbon carbon bond this bond will undergo breakage to give you this lactone moiety okay because like i showed you these two diols will bind to your lead center and subsequently the five membered ring will undergo breakage in this way to give you this lactone all other functionalities if you see the hydroxy ester which can also be considered to be a reactive functionality does not undergo any kind of change and they stay intact okay only your diol moiety is reacting with lead tetraacetate and sodium meta par iodate but <coughs> you have to also see that the yields are different in this case okay so depending on the yields mentioned in the literature you can choose either lead tetraacetate or sodium meta par iodate for these kind of lactone generating reactions so i hope this has become very easy for you now okay again i have uh, given you this particular substrate which can react with all these three different type of reagents okay and all three lead tetraacetate hydroiodic acid and sodium meta par iodate all these three reagents can give you the same product okay and if we talk about the eels also this particular substrate has uh, is known to give comparable eels in all these three reactions okay it is almost same okay it is just the reaction time you have to notice okay lead tetraacetate in this case is taking the least time which is 15 minutes only but uh, whereas the iodine based reagents are taking a little longer time okay but you just have to notice the product which is formed okay that is the same product that you are going to get by carbon carbon bond cleavage okay and here also you will get a five member ring intermediate formation then followed by the carbon carbon cleavage to give you aldehyde aldehyde of this alcohol okay you can imagine the breaking of this substrate into two equal halves through this axis and you are going to get this aldehyde <coughs> now here we have a bismuth based reagent okay so what is happening here you can see an aryl amine is present and it is reacting with aryl bismuth reagent okay this bismuth in plus 5 oxidation state uh, reagent is denoting these two kind of reagent okay it is uh, basically nothing but containing aryl groups which are transferable okay and uh, this o pivotal or this ester moiety which is present those are nothing but the ligands present in the bismuth center okay you just have to um, notice this aryl groups present in the bismuth center because those are transferable okay and again this reaction is catalyzed by copper 2 catalyst and it is carried out in dcm solvent okay dichloromethane solvent and the net result if you see the net result is basically the aryl ation of the aryl amine okay 
whatever aryl group is present in your bismuth plus 5 reagent is getting transferred to your amine center okay and you are getting this secondary amine now so we will see how this reaction is occurring and what kind of mechanism it is following but you can see how efficient this reaction as well okay the reaction is taking only 5 minutes and giving you 100% yield almost 100% yield you can expect from this particular reaction okay so let us see how this highly efficient reaction is taking place so this is the mechanism which the research paper has mentioned so uh, suppose this amine we are starting with okay here in this case we are taking ARNH2 but let us denote it simply R1 R2 NH okay in our case between R1 R2 one one of these is hydrogen and the other is aryl group then we are taking this aryl bismuth reagent in which the bismuth is present in plus 5 oxidation state and this copper reagent which uh, where ym is nothing but the ligand uh, present in the copper center is just catalyzing catalyzing the reaction so when you mix the substrate aryl bismuth reagent and the catalyst you can expect the formation of this kind of uh, this kind of intermediate where you can see this copper center is attached to the aryl ring taken up from the bismuth center okay and the amine center which is nh here is coordinating to this copper metal center okay so what happens after uh, mixing all these three reagents these two will undergo oxidative addition and transmetallation okay the bismuth reagent and copper will undergo oxidative addition and transmetallation to give you this kind of intermediate where the copper center you can see is attached to the aryl group from bismuth and x is also the ligand coming from the bismuth center okay and the amine is coordinating through the lone pair of electrons towards the metal center which is copper after this transition state formation you can see that the lone pair present on the nitrogen can attack at the aryl group which was coming from the bismuth center and it can lead to the breakage of this aryl copper bond which formed by transmetallation okay so after the breakage of this copper aryl bond you can now see that this aryl group has been transferred to our amine okay and this ar2bx was already eliminated after the oxidative addition and transmetallation and the catalyst is regenerated at the end of your reaction and the leaving group which is x here takes up proton from the reaction mixture or during the workup of the reaction to give you this xh byproduct okay these uh, byproducts you can leave aside but you just have to notice that the amine that we took is now uh, has now gotten aryllated from the bismuth reagent okay this is how we can use organo bismuth reagents for synthesis of aryl amines okay so in this way the phenyl which was first present in the bismuth center can first undergo oxidative addition and transmetallation with this copper catalyst which then undergoes reductive elimination to transfer the phenyl group to the amine center okay and ultimately we are getting this aryllated amine as our final product <coughs> same kind of reaction 
I have shown, but here we have lead triacetoxy, uh, lead triacetate. Okay, here also we have an aryl group present in the lead center. Okay, so this substrate we have, which if you see are containing acidic protons on it. Okay, and we are treating it with lead triacetate reagent which is containing aryl group which is transferable in presence of pyridine basic okay and the condition is also a little harsh which is reflux okay so in dcm solvent we are refluxing the reaction mixture and you can see the, as the product in both these sides we have now aryl groups attached okay in this center also and in this center we have now aryl groups attached coming from the lead triacetate reagent okay so in this particular case what you can expect is in both these two centers if you see we have acidic protons present okay because of the presence of this electron withdrawing COO, BN, ester functionality and also the uh, newly generated carbon ion can undergo conjugation with the carbonyl groups which are adjacent. Okay, So, we, in presence of pyridine base, we can generate carbon ion on these two centers. Then, the carbon ions which are generated can undergo addition to the lead center and result in the leaving of acetate groups. Okay, so first the lead center will get attached to the region where we are generating the carbon ion. After that, this ketone center can undergo uh, enolization, okay, and that enol can take up this aryl group in the similar way which we saw the amine was doing in the last question, okay. For simplicity, I will draw you, draw it for you in one side. Suppose this enolization happens in presence of base. And it can undergo to attack with the lead first, okay. And then this carbon center can attack at this aryl group, which is transferable present in the lead center, can lead to the formation of this aryllated ketone, okay. And in the other side also you can expect the same kind of reactivity because of the presence of the acidic proton at this center. Okay, so this is how lead triacetates are used for transferring allyl group, aryl groups to the substrates of this kind which are containing either active methylene compound or acidic highly acidic protons they contain okay so similar reactivity can be ex expected from bismuth reagents of this type okay here also if you see we have acidic proton present at this position and we have bismuth reagent which is containing three transferable phenyl groups and also uh, it is containing leaving groups which are which are chlorides okay and we are also taking various bases in this case and you can expect the aryl transfer product of this type okay and you can also uh, see that diastereomeric mixture is obtained in this reaction 
So, if you notice how the diastereoselectivity is getting generated, it is because of the change of the stereochemistry of these two centers. Okay, so these two centers stereochemistry will lead to the formation of this diastereomeric products. So, uh, in the same way like we saw in the previous question, the generation of anion at this position by base can lead to the aryl abstraction from the bismuth reagent. Okay. So, this is again a similar question which we saw in the last uh, last to last example where we have this aryl amine already and again we are taking lead triacetate containing a transferable aryl group in presence of copper catalyst and i'm sure you can uh, easily answer this question already where the net result of this reaction is aryl arylation of our aryl amine substrate okay so this aryl ring which was initially present in the lead center will now get transferred to our amine substrate okay so this is going to be the final product <laughs> then another uh, example from the same topic where uh, now the substrate if you see is beta keto ester which is containing acidic, acidic proton and it is treated with this aryl lead triacetate in presence of three equivalents of pyridine base okay and the position which is containing the acidic proton is abstracting the aryl group <coughs> to give us arylation at the alpha position of the ketone okay so this is the product that you can expect. Now, let us look at this tin based reagent. Okay, we have this iodobenzene and it is reacting with this stain, uh, tributyl stainin attached aline. Okay, and the catalyst that we are using in this reaction is palladium in presence of lithium chloride. Okay, and if you see the net result, you can see that the aryl, uh, the iodobenzene is coupled with this carbon which is containing the tributyl stainer. So, this is nothing but stele coupling, okay. So, if we uh, look at the mechanism how this aline is undergoing stele coupling, you can see that at first, the palladium which is in oxidation state 0 will undergo reductive, uh, will undergo oxidative addition to give you palladium plus 2 center with aryl iodide okay which is iodobenzene in our case and after undergoing oxidative addition you can see that the lithium chloride which is added is transferring the chloride to the palladium center and you get lithium iodide as your byproduct okay then the introduction of the aline substrate takes place and the aline is now coordinating to your palladium center okay and transmetallation of the aline substrate is taking place at the at this compound number 10 okay and the transmetallation product will now undergo reductive elimination in this way to give you the transfer of aryl group to the aline substrate 
and the palladium center will again return to its zero oxidation state. Okay, so by oxidative addition, then transmetallation and reductive elimination, you can get this steely coupling product of aline. Okay. So, now this is another question. Okay. So, this reactivity, if you see, is coming from the iodine based reagent which was taken in the last week's lecture. Okay. So, you can see how this reaction is taking place. Okay. Because this is a very interesting reaction where this iodine reagent is converting our vinyl carboxylic acid to vinyl bromide okay and you get these non-toxic byproducts in the course of the reaction okay and the reaction mechanism is very very interesting that is why i have included this example here okay see what happens when the iodine reagent is added to the vinyl carboxylic acid you can see the formation of this kind of intermediate product where two carboxylic acid moieties are attacking at the iodine center okay and this newly generated product 11 can now undergo reaction with this N bromine bond con containing reagent leading to the bromination of the olefin present in the carboxylic group okay which is coming from the vinyl carboxylic acid and after the bromination this iodine oxygen bond breaks leading to the formation of this vinyl bromide which is your final product okay after the bond breakage of iodine oxygen you can see a decarboxylation is happening at this position and this arrow is generating a vinyl uh, functionality at this position and now the uh, carbon bromine bond breaks from this side to neutralize your bromonium ion which was generated and it ultimately gives you vinyl bromide starting from vinyl carboxylic acid. Then let us come to the topic which is dehydrogenation using lead reagents. Okay. In this particular substrate, lead tetraacetate is acting in two different ways, okay, to give you two different products which are number 3 and number 4. So, let us see how this reaction is taking place to give you dehydrogenation at this position, okay. Across this bond, you can see dehydrogenation at this uh, product which was covered in the first lecture of this week. So, at first what happens is this ketone can undergo enolization to give you oxygen lead bond as, as shown in the product number 2. And it also knocks out one acetate group, okay. 
this side it will be a cycle and here we have the amide functional substituent. in this way then here we have the enol double bond okay then if we talk about the formation of uh, compound number three how it is forming the acetate which left at the first step due to the attack of the enol to lead tetraacetate that will come back and attack at this carbon center to regenerate the ketone in this way okay and the lead will be knocked out you will get this product by this mechanism okay the acetate will come back and attack at that position now let us see how the second product is forming okay in this case what happens see here you have the cycle and here you have two protons okay so the acetate is going to take up this proton and the arrows will be go going like this to ultimately break the oxygen lead bond okay here you have two protons and here we have the enolization and the oxygen lead bond which is having three acetate ligands attached and here you also have the amide functionality attached okay so i am saying that the acetate will attack at this proton it will be abstracted and the double bond will shift here the ketone will be regenerated leading to the breakage of oxygen lead bond to give you this dehydrogenated product so this is how you can expect dehydrogenation reaction using lead tetraacetate okay then let us move to another question from teen based reagent okay this is a very interesting and very <coughs> uh, important example from the teen based reagents okay so this is the well known barton decarboxylation where this acid is getting converted to this alkane okay r c o h is converted to r h using this barton ester which forms in the course of the reaction so let us see how this reaction happens and at first let us look at how barton ester is getting formed okay so this step is nothing but the dcc coupling reaction involvement okay this uh, this hydroxy functionality undergoes coupling with the carboxylic acid functionality to give you this rcoo functionality okay this ester functionality is introduced by dcc coupling and this is, is nothing but dicyclohexyl carbodiimide and for the mechanism the dicyclohexyl carbodiimide can abstract a proton from the carboxylic acid in this way to give you the carboxylate conjugate base okay and that can undergo addition to your dcc which is protonated okay and you get a an intermediate product of this type now we have dmap base also in the reaction mixture okay with dcc the dmap will act which is dimethyl amino pyridine will add to the carboxylate in this way 
and the DCC part will be knocked out. Okay. Now you can see that the carboxylic group, uh, the carboxylate substrate in the form of RCO is now attached to our base, which is dimethyl amino pyridine. Now, this quaternary ammonium center will undergo reaction with alcohol, okay, because this is nothing but the coupling of alcohol and carboxylic acid, okay. So, this alcohol will now attack at this carbonyl group and the quaternary ammonium substituent will be knocked out in this way to neutralize this positively charged nitrogen atom. Okay, many times when uh, questions from DCC coupling arises, they ask you that the, uh, the ester that is getting generated in the DCC coupling reaction, which oxygen is coming from acid and which oxygen is coming from alcohol. This question I have seen is asked in various questions which are based on DCC coupling reaction. Okay. In that case, you have to know this mechanism of DCC coupling. Okay. For that, you can see at this part that after the formation of this amide type of intermediate, the alcohol comes to attack at the carbonyl center and hence you know that this carbonyl group oxygen is coming from the carboxylic acid whereas this alkoxy you can say R-O substituent is coming oxygen is coming from the incoming alcohol okay so in the first step in presence of DCC and DMAP base our alcohol and our carboxylic acid are generating this Barton ester in this with this mechanism okay after the generation of Barton ester now what happens we have AIBN in the reaction medium okay AIBN is nothing but the radical initiator okay so that radical initiator can create this tin tributyl tin radical by homolytic cleavage of tributyl uh, tin hydride reagent okay and AIBN like I said is nothing but azobis isobutyro nitrile which is a well known radical initiator okay. So, it is containing, the AIBN is containing this type of structure, okay. And as a radical initiator, this side also the same substituent is present. As a radical initiator, they undergo breakage of this bond and you get a stable radical which is this particular radical okay now this radical can undergo reaction with tributyl teen hydride in this fashion where the tributyl oh, oh, tributyl tin hydride can undergo homolytic cleavage in this manner and you get this tin radical which is newly generated now after generation of this tributyl tin radical it can undergo radical reaction with our Barton ester which we have synthesized using DCC coupling okay and 
in this fashion you will see the formation of this sulfur teen bond by radical reaction and this will lead to the formation of this new carboxylate radical okay now this carboxylate radical can readily undergo decarboxylation by the cleavage of this carbon carbon bond okay so as a result you get this alkyl radical after elimination of carbon dioxide from the system and this alkyl radical now can take up proton from the tributyl tin hydride it can basically react in the same way as this radical did okay you can expect the bond formation in this way and the tributyl tributyl tin radical gets uh, regenerated which can again continue the propagation of your radical reaction okay and in this way you end up getting your alkane starting from a carboxylic acid <coughs> so this is the mechanism of barton decarboxylation reaction which uses tributyl tin hydride reagent okay then another example from the same topic barton decarboxylation similar way you can see the formation of alkyl halide starting from this carboxylic acid okay so the reaction is going to follow <coughs> the same kind of mechanism okay first you uh, by the coupling of the carboxylic acid and this ester by the reaction the barton ester can be generated okay <coughs> and after the formation of this barton ester the rest of the steps you have already seen in the previous case it is just at the last step when suppose you have after the carboxylate radical undergoes decarboxylation you have this alkyl radical right and this alkyl radical can now react with this halo alkane okay suppose this x is denoted as chlorine or bromine so it can cleave the carbon x bond to take up the x to give you alkyl halide in this way and the ccl3 whatever radical goes out is quenched the other radicals present in the reaction environment and you get this rx as your final product so this is how you can start from carboxylic acid and via barton decarboxylation mechanism you can get either hello alkane uh, either alkane or hello alkane okay this is how using this uh, tin based reagent you can synthesize alkane or hello alkane okay so with this we have now today solved various questions which were basically based on silicon lead tin and bismuth reagents okay let us now quickly revise how uh, which type of questions we included today <coughs> at the very beginning we started with this modification of julia olefination uh, peterson ole olefination where we generated the anion 
at this position which which is believed to be stable because of the presence of this electron withdrawing group okay that uh, generates an anion with the help of butyl lithium and that anion can undergo a nucleophilic addition reaction with this aldehyde to give you an alcohol which is subsequently protected with acetic anhydride to give you this intermediate acetate product okay this is how i showed you the mechanism and here you have to show the counter cation as well i have not written that you have to show the lithium counter cation along with this anion which is forming okay then after formation of this acetate uh, intermediate product it again undergoes reaction with excess of dbu base to generate this olefin okay and at the last step this olefin undergoes reaction with samarium iodide basically samarium metal where we saw that the uh, the samarium metal can undergo single electron transfer to break this carbon sulfur bond and it then gives another electron to generate carbon ion which can take up proton from methanol to give you this e olefin which is more stable okay and this was the mechanism that i showed you from a research paper <clears throat> then we talked about selectivity of silylated protecting groups deep protection okay and we talk if you if your substrate has secondary and primary alcohols the primary alcohol uh, uh, primary protected alcohols are more readily deep protected okay and the yields of these deep protection reaction are also seen to be very very good then we compared the time which is required for the deep protection of silylated uh, silyl protected alcohols okay and we saw that as the bulkiness at the sil uh, silicon atom increases the stability towards acids and bases of this protecting groups also also increase <coughs> and that is why this kind of trend in the time required for their deep protection is seen then we uh, talked about this particular substrate which is containing three different protecting groups uh, silicon protecting groups okay and we saw that tbs which is the least bulky out of all these three undergoes reaction in this weakly acidic condition then again in this case although tbs was bulkier as compared to tes but since this is a primary alcohol protected uh, pro protecting silicon so this is more readily deprotected to give you this primary free alcohol then we came to the mechanism of uh, cleavage of diols to give you this kind of diketone products okay and we discussed the reaction mechanism also <coughs> which can involve these kind of five membered rings which ultimately undergoes carbon carbon bond cleavage again we saw that this particular substrate despite the presence of hydroxy and ester functionality this only underwent reaction at the diol position to give you this as uh, lactone moiety then this substrate was seen to undergo diol cleavage to give us this aldehyde in presence of lead tetraacetate hydroiodic acid and the sodium metaperiodate condition then we talked about this <coughs> bismuth plus 5 reagent which is used for aryl transfer to this 
primary amine to give us the aryl amine product okay and in this particular reaction copper 2 is acting as catalyst and we also talked about the mechanism of this reaction where this kind of transition state was seen to be involved okay and another aryl transfer reagent uh, reag aryl transfer reaction we saw where this aryl group which is attached to the lead center was transferred transferred to the centers both the centers which were containing highly acidic proton okay in presence of pyridine it is seen that the aryl groups are transferred to the alpha position of the ketone Similar reactivity is observed in presence of this aryl bismuth reagent in presence of base where this uh, active methylene compound where you, you can expect the presence of acidic proton at this carbon undergoes aryl transfer at this position with the phenyl groups attached to the bismuth center. Okay. And the diastereo selectivity is uh, diastereomer formation is coming because of these two chiral centers present. Okay. <coughs> Another uh, reactivity, similar kind of reactivity was observed. Again, this reaction was also catalyzed by copper, and the aryl group which is attached to the lead center is transferred to R. Uh, this aryl amine okay and here also the position which is containing an acidic proton proton is taking up the aryl group of the lead triacetate reagent and then we saw the mechanism of this steel reaction uh, steel coupling reaction where these were the steps involved. We saw oxidative addition, transmetallation and reductive elimination could transfer the aryl group from palladium catalyst to the allene group. Okay. So, this example was in, uh, included from last week's topic. From this week's topics, again we talked about hydrogenation using lead tetraacetate okay we saw that at first the enol can undergo reaction with lead center and the outgoing acetate can act as the <coughs> dehydrogenating uh, reagent okay and both the mechanisms for the formation of both these products was shown okay then we talked about this very very interesting reagent uh, reaction which is button decarboxylation where we saw that at first this dcc coupling was furnishing the button ester starting from this hydroxy and carboxylic acid and the button ester can undergo a radical cycle to give you this alkane as your product and lastly upon the reaction of this alkyl radical which is formed at this stage of button decarboxylation can undergo reaction with haloalkane to give you this kind of new haloalkane product starting from carboxylic acids. So these were the questions that we have discussed in today's tutorial. So I, uh, I hope you go through the video lectures there were only two video lectures in this week and the examples were also very very interesting there were a few examples that were included in today's lecture which were not covered in the video lecture also okay so you can understand those examples and you can also study those examples because in organic synthesis point of view those reactions are also very very important so, if you have any query regarding this week's topic, you can ask and 
I hope to see you in the next week's tutorial which is going to be the tutorial 8. Okay. Thank you so much.